Welcome to labminutes.com and our lab video series on Cisco and XOS. This is Matha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of NXOS videos, you can visit our website under Data Center section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. I would like to welcome you guys to Lab Minutes next Data Center video series. Cisco Data Center technologies have gone through quite a bit of evolution in the past two decades. Traditional data center network used to be based on the three-tier architecture with the core distribution and access layer. When you have redundant links between the tiers, you then need to deal with spanning tree blocking, which does not only reduces network capacity, but also costs slow convergence. When NXOS came out with the Nexus switches, it eliminated spanning tree blocking with virtual port channel feature, or VPC, which we looked at in the last video series. VPC then became a norm when Nexus switches are deployed in data center. While not having spanning tree blocking was good, it still does exist in the design. That along with increasingly popular demand of having a layer 2 domain available anywhere in a data center, that kind of drove the next generation data center architecture towards a routed fabric. A fabric would eliminate spanning tree in the core and significantly reduce the size of layer 2 broadcast domain, allowing much better scalability. For a short time, Cisco had this technology called Fabric Path for this, but because it was proprietary and only supported layer 2 traffic, it was not long before it was replaced by another technology called VXLAN. VXLAN is now pretty much industry standard and can support both layer 2 and layer 3 type of traffic. Because of that, it has quickly gained popularity across many industry-leading networking vendors, including Cisco. Today, you can find VXLAN being implemented everywhere, not only in data center, but also in the campus network. Right? For Cisco, VXLAN is the key component for SDA and ACI. In this video series, we are going to focus on how to implement VXLAN in data center on NXOS switches. Starting this video, we will give you a quick introduction to VXLAN and discuss some foundation concepts to get you ready for the rest of our video series. If you already have a basic knowledge of VXLAN, feel free to skip to the next video. But if you are new to this or need a little refresher, let's go through this video together. Let's start by discussing VXLAN architecture and its components. I'm going to go ahead and use this diagram right here to assist the explanation. VXLAN based network is built upon three stage clause network that consists of a layer of spine, which is this guy right here, and a layer of leaf switches, which is this guy right here. Spines connect to all leaf switches to provide high speed transit backbone network. Leaves may have one or more connections to the spines depending on the required bandwidth. In our case here, when you have two spines, then a leaf would at minimum have a connections to each of the spine. While spines usually do not have links to each other, leaves may be connected together if a back VPC is deployed, which is the case right here. There is also another mode of VPC called VPC fabric peering that uses fabric uplinks for a peer link and peer keep alive, which would eliminate a need for physical back-to-back -back cable. And that is an example right here. You can see these two guys for VPC fabric peer link. There's no direct connections between them. In fact, the peer link and keep alive leverages or built a tunnel through the fabric. And we will have a lab for that 